Hello and welcome. In today's video, we're trying to achieve two objectives. Yes, we're going to be talking about LLM agents in Microsoft Fabric, which means we will talk to Power BI semantic models using LangChain agents. We'll be doing that in our Python Fabric notebooks. We will also try to think through and how close we're getting to ability to replace our business logic scripts simply with LLM prompts. So instead of writing pages and pages of SQL or Python or whatever language of your choice is, code for business logic, implementing business rules, we're getting pretty darn close to just do that using English or whatever your language is and open AI LLMs. The second objective is to start getting closer to answering this big question. How long do we really have before Gen AI or whatever the new name will be for it takes over pretty much everything in business intelligence and data engineering? Based on my research over the next several weeks, and I'm not a data scientist, I am a business intelligence slash data engineering, data management professional, I would say, but having completely immersed myself in this topic over the last month or so, I think that the answer is getting pretty clear and the answer is very soon. I'm not saying that there will be no job market for people with our skill sets very soon. I'm saying that very soon our lives will change dramatically. So the question is, how do I know? Well, over the last couple of videos, I've been traveling down this journey trying to understand what is happening in the world of business intelligence, data engineering, and how open AI LLM models are going to impact it. So initially, the first thing I did, I just got open AI to do some data enrichment in Microsoft Fabric. What does data enrichment mean? That means that I was able to add new columns to my existing tables with data that was generated for me using open AI. So what might you do to enrich your data? Well, you might be able to add new columns to your data set where you're replacing, let's say, swear words with asterisks. Another thing that we're doing, we're taking lat long for an event and we're doing a geospatial substitution and we're turning it into a zip code. So I'm not writing any SQL. I don't have any geospatial capabilities. I'm literally just going to open AI and say, hey, for this lat long, what's the zip code? And the list of data enrichment scenarios with open AI is unbelievably impressive. The next thing was, okay, open AI models, most of these LLM models are kind of, let's say, read only. So can I bring my own data to the context so that I can augment whatever the open AI model knows about the world with my enterprise data? And I was able to figure it out and get the RAG retrieval augmented generation architecture implemented in Microsoft Fabric. And now finally, in this video, I just got OpenAI to slice and dice my Power BI semantic models to, in order to get answers to the business questions. Well, what about semantic models? Why is it such a big deal? Apparently, LLMs are not really good with making sense out of tabular data, let alone Power BI semantic model, which is basically a cube. So LLMs are really good at predicting the next word. And in order to extend that capabilities of LLMs, there is a new iteration of the evolution in evolution of the generative AI, and that's the idea of agents. Agents give LLMs ability to use external tools to bring capabilities that LLMs don't have built in. So for example, in our case, agent, LangChain agent that we will be using in our demo will actually be using Python to take our Power BI dataset and use Python functions in order to explore the data and uh, be able to respond to our business questions. Before I jump into the code, I just want to preface this with the following. I will eventually be sharing everything that I've learned. It's going to be happening over the next week or two, couple of weeks. The reason I have not been sharing too much code is because there is a bunch of demos and a bunch of notebooks and a bunch of samples that's out there provided both by LangChain, by OpenAI, by Microsoft, unfortunately, very little of those samples work. Things are changing too rapidly. And I assume as of the time when those things were posted, they were working, but as things change for some reason, basically I was not able to get a single piece of code that could I could just deploy in Microsoft Fabric and that would just work. So it took me forever to figure out how to wire everything together, how to configure everything. And I'm not sure if it's the best way to do things. 
So over the next week or two, I'm going to let everything percolate and settle down. And then once I have a good idea of what is the right way to do this thing, some Microsoft Fabric, I will publish a definitive guide on how to build wall-to-wall, end-to-end, how to implement OpenAI, RAG, and agents in Microsoft Fabric. But enough of me yapping. Let's go ahead and jump into the code and into the actual demo. Okay, so let's jump in. The first thing that we need to do is we need to install a bunch of Python libraries. In our case, we're using LangChain, LangChain agents, and we will be installing LangChain, LangChain Experimental, and LangChain Open libraries. The next piece is we need to decide which agent we will be using for talking to our Power BI dataset. So in our case, we're using a Spark data frame agent. Now, LangChain has a bunch of different agents. I got several types of agents to work. They have a Spark data frame agent. They have a Pandas agent, which I may or may not show in this video. We'll see if I have enough time. They also, believe it or not, have a Power BI agent. I looked at that, it seems a little wonky. I'm not sure if that's the best way how they've implemented it. And there's also a SQL agent. So what that means is that when you create that agent, that agent will be able to do analysis based on the kind of agent that it is. So in our case, it's a Spark data frame agent. So it will be using Python as tools to analyze the data inside of the data frame. If it's within Pandas, it's gonna be using Pandas, library, and then if it's a SQL, then it'll know how to generate SQL to slice and dice our data. Now, this step is incredibly important. What we're doing here is we're basically a loading our Power BI semantic model data into the data frame. And the way we do it is if you have semantic link library, and I strongly recommend that everybody becomes an expert and a daily user of that tool, that tool alone the semantic link library is the reason enough for me to focus on Spark notebooks instead of T-SQL because of all of the powerful things that semantic link can do. So here what we're doing is we're effectively allowing us to use Spark SQL to run SQL command on top of the semantic model. So here I have a sales data set and I'm just saying, hey, give me units, amount, product, brand, customer, state, and date for my semantic model. I do the joins and then I cache that data so that it's pinged to memory, pinned to memory, and I don't have to rerun the SQL every time. And just to make sure that it works, let me show you the data and you could see some of the data that live inside of this data frame. The next step is we then need an OpenAI LLM model to do the LLM type of thing on top of our prompts. So what we need to do is basically two things are happening. LLM model uses our prompts and it uses the LangChain agent to basically use English plus Python to be able to slice and dice our data set. So here what we do is we use one of my favorite functions these days, find secret from the Synapse ML. So we pull that up and then we use that to create our Azure chat OpenAI model. And then in this line of code, we're basically testing it to make sure that we're able to get the predicted response. So here I'm saying, hey, translate this sentence from English to French and the language, the sentence that I would like it to translate is, I am a Power BI wonder. So after some debugging information, we see the translated text. I'm not gonna embarrass myself with my French accent, but you could see that it actually said that in French. Okay, now that our model seems to be up and running and working, we can create our agent. And the way we're going to create our agent is by passing it the model. And we're going to also pass the, the Spark data frame that contains our Power BI semantic model data. I also specify that we want it to be verbose because I would like to see all of the intermediate steps that the agent has to follow in order to get from my initial question to the final answer. And now what I'm doing is I'm asking my agent a simple question how many records are in the data set and you see that it's giving me all of the steps it says hey to get the number of records in a data set i could use count method on the data frame blah 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 and it says final answer there are 11792 records in the data set 
let's make our question a little bit more sophisticated. So now I'm about to ask it, what are total units? Let's launch that. So now you can see it's entering executor chain. It's gonna go through its whole internal logic and it might take a couple of seconds and you can see how it's thinking about things. And after about 19 seconds, it came up with the answer. The final answer is the total units are 604 million units. The next question is gonna be a little bit more complicated. What are the total units now in Illinois? Let's run that. So let's see what it responded with. It says, hey, since I need to find the total units in Illinois and I'm giving Spark data frame, I should filter the data frame where state is Illinois and then sum the units column to get the total units in Illinois. So it uses this Python command. So that's all happening while it's trying to answer my question. It's physically taking the data frame and running Python code in order to get me this answer, 520, 51 million units. Now I can spend all day interacting with this data set. This is kind of the time, this is similar to what you would be doing in Copilot and Power BI or Copilot and Notebook as you explore your data. So it's very similar capability. But what we're trying to glean out of it is that even though LLMs, A, are not very good with working with data, what's happening here is LLM is being used to A, understand the meaning of the question that I'm trying to ask. Then it's using tools like Python, SQL, email tools. So if you look at LangChain agents and toolkit, you will see a bunch of different things that now are available to string together a chain of actions where, where this agent basically becomes a piece of logic that you, could, you can just execute. So here's a scenario, I'll give you a quick scenario. Let's say that I have a car and the car has an error code. There's a check engine light that came up. So I run a Power BI report and that tells me that this is the error code or error codes. What do I do next? What do I do next is I could go into my user manual, look things up there and say, giving this combination of everything that I know about these error codes, the, the model number, the time of the year, I look things up in my PDF document now and say, hey, this is what the root cause is, this is what the problem is. After that, I could go into another document and use LLM to look up what do I do if it's, you know, Q1, what the severity of the event is, and I look up what my standard operating procedure is to respond to this error code. So basically, I'm stringing together a bunch of different actions where I'm using Power BI to look up data and create a context for what's happening. And then I'm looking things up in my documents. And then I use agents to not only look things up and stitch together this thinking process, as you can see. So basically you're seeing how it's, it's it, sometimes it takes several steps. So this is a pretty simple thing that it does, but I have seen this chains go 10, 20 steps long where it says, okay, let's do this, then do this, and based on this, let's do this. So effectively, it's executing a whole logic, a whole batch of rules or store procedures, you can think of it, to, to arrive at the desired outcome. So I'm not gonna sugarcoat a bunch of questions that I was trying to ask, uh, you could not answer. So it's still not very, it's not very robust still, I would say. However, given the speed of how quickly these things develop, I can't even, imagine how quickly we're going to go from being able to just answer basic questions to being able to model and execute very complicated business scenarios. The last thing before I jump into my final thoughts is let's ask it to do a described data set. So what that what it does then is analyzing our data set is generating it says, hey, to describe a data set, I need to get a summary for each column, such as count, mean, standard deviation, blah, blah, blah. So it generates this table for us. Then it says, I now know the final answer. And it says, hey, there is this many records in the data set. And then for each column, it says units. There is how many unique values for units, mean and max amounts. It's giving me some information about amount. It's looking at product, brand, customer, state information, and giving me some high level information about what's happening there. Again, this is amazing because traditionally and generally speaking, LLMs are really not good at dealing with tabular data, rows and columns. And what's more, more amazing, we're actually doing it not with just any rows and columns, we're doing with our Power BI dataset, Power BI semantic model, and we're doing it nowhere else but in Microsoft Fabric. And now some time for my final thoughts. So I'll be honest with you guys, last week I was at the 
Fabric Conference. It was amazing. I had a lot of fun. I had a cool session. Thank you, everybody who visited, who who came to the session. And also, it was amazing to catch up with everybody, reconnect with a bunch of people. That was awesome. And one thing I could not stop thinking was that when I had a bunch of conversation with, with people and they talked about things that they're excited about Power BI, some of the things that they're still frustrated about Power BI, some of the features that they were hoping would be solved by now or would improve, or some of the features that are working so amazingly well. I couldn't help myself to think that everybody's kind of missing the big boat on this one, that we're talking about things that a year or two years from now are going to be completely and utterly meaningless. We're looking at a situation with net incremental capabilities. We're not looking at a situation with LLM, OpenAI, agents, LangChain, all of these keywords and buzzwords that you're hearing probably everywhere, everywhere from all the vendors, from the emails, from all the videos. Our world literally is about to change dramatically. We're about to start doing things that we have not even dreamt about before. It was a big leap from going from traditional BI into cubes. It was a big leap from going to cubes into the cloud. It was a big leap from going from the cloud into delta lakes and data lakes. But all of those technologies were evolutionary. Here, we're talking about a set of capabilities that could potentially completely redefine of what business intelligence and data engineering is all about. So the bad news is if you're sick and tired of things changing and you have to constantly keep learning, then yes, this is not going to be fun for you. But if you're like me, where you're genuinely excited about what's next, you're excited about innovating in the space, then I think we're about to enter the most unbelievably exciting period of our lives. And what's really cool and exciting is that I don't have to learn and step out into a completely different set of technologies. I can literally do everything that I need to do and learn everything I need to learn, staying right here in the tool of technology they love, Microsoft Power BI and Microsoft Fabric. So again, all these videos, last four or five videos, were meant to be more of a teaser, just to whet your appetite, get you to think about what's coming, what's possible. A detailed end-to-end -end guide is coming. There's going to be a lot of things available at obvians.com in terms of accelerator, in terms of how to get these things going. If you like this video, if you learned something here, then please like and subscribe. And I will see you back on the next one.